okay so today uh, we'll start with the bail drive okay uh, so why bail drive is used basically uh, <coughs> the power the power trans uh, is transmitted transmitted from one sub one shaft to another by means of by means of belt ropes chains gear etc okay when the distance when the distance uh, between the shaft between the shaft is larger then uh <coughs> belts uh ropes ropes and chain are used are used for small distance for small distance gears are suitable okay now in case of uh, <coughs> flat belt remember in case of flat belts the distance between the shafts should not be more than more than 10 meters okay 10 meter and <coughs> If you, uh, if you want to have good result, okay, so then the distance should not be more than 10 meter. Otherwise, if it will be more than 10 meter, what will happen? Uh, the belt will have a slack uh, length, and that uh, leads to slippage of the belt over the pulley. So we won't get the desired amount of velocity ratio. And in case of uh, belt, case of belt and ropes ropes power is transmitted transmitted due to friction due to friction between between the belt and pulley okay when <clears throat> the power is to be transmitted when the we can say torque torque to be transmitted exceeds exceeds the frictional force frictional force belt slips over the pulley 
slips over the pulley and then no power can be transmitted okay since there is since there is existence of existence of slippage slippage so exact exact velocity ratio exact velocity ratio cannot be obtained cannot be obtained obtained from belt and rope drives okay for this reason for this reason they are not positive drives positive drives okay the <clears throat> whereas whereas gear drive is known as a positive drive because there is not kind of slippage in case of gear drive and uh, normally we get the exact velocity ratio of course there won't be some uh, there will be some variation but the amount of variation is very small compared to your belt drive for this reason belt drive is not regarded as a positive drive but gear drive is a positive drive remember this this one is important okay then <clears throat> coming to the different types of belt drives that we use okay normally <clears throat> uh, uh types types of belt drive okay so first category is your open belt drive okay this is known as your open belt drive okay in this case what happened you will have is and this is basically used for used for uh, parallel for shaft arranged arranged parallel parallel and rotating and rotating in same direction okay uh, here you can see suppose uh, this a is the driver shaft okay and b is the uh, driven shaft the top view you can see this one is the driving shaft and this shaft is the uh, driven shaft and <clears throat> pulleys are mounted on the shafts and over the pulley the belt is wrapped around okay so when uh, torque is transmitted to the driving shaft 
then the pulley starts rotating and due to friction as the belt is wrapped around it the belt starts moving okay so when this belt moves uh, in clockwise direction it comes to the driven shaft and on the pulley again it moves okay due to friction and again it comes back to this position q okay here you can see as the driver is rotating in clockwise direction at this point it catch hold the belt okay and here it releases okay this one is point of release point of release and this point is the point of holding you can say holding because of this as it is leaving the belt at this point that's why this side is known as your slack side loose in side okay rather you can say loose slack side and this side is known as your tight side tight side okay <coughs> so in this case the driver a basically pulls the belt from one side that is uh, at the lower end okay rq and delivers it to the other side uh, that is on the upper side that is the lm side here you can see thus the tension in the lower side is belt will be more than that of the upper side okay so the tension of belt is more at lower side and it is less at the upper side upper side or it is also known as your slack side okay so the lower side belt because of uh, more tension is known as tight side okay the lower side belt because of more tension it is known as tight side and the upper side belt because of less tension it is called slack side okay so this is the case of your open belt drive next is your first category is open belt drive second is your crossed belt drive crossed belt drive so in case of crossed belt drive you can see the figure so uh, this is normally the schematic of a crossed belt drive so <coughs> it is used it is used with shafts arranged parallel sorry parallel and rotating in opposite direction opposite directions here you can see uh, this one is the driver shaft and this one is the driven shaft and the driver shaft is rotating in clockwise direction whereas the driven shaft because of the nature of the wrapping of the belt around the pulley it rotates in counter clockwise direction okay so if at all we need a situation where the driven side is to be rotated opposite uh, to that of the uh, driver uh, shaft in that case we have to use this cross belt drive okay so in this case the driver pulls the belt okay uh, and from this uh, qr side and releases this on the uh, other side that is their lm side so this qr side is known as your tight side and this lm side is known as your slack side okay 
and this is the top view where you can see both the shafts okay on which pulleys are mounted and <coughs> belt is wrapped around okay now this is known as your crossed belt drive third category is your quarter turn belt drive quarter turn belt drive so <coughs> schematic of quarter turn belt drive is here you can see we have two situations without and with a guide pulley you can see so this is basically a quarter ton bell drive okay this is called quarter ton bell drive so it is also known as also known as a uh, right angle bell drive right angle belt drive okay and it is used and is used uh, with shafts with shafts arranged arranged at a right angle right angle and rotating and rotating in one one definite direction definite direction okay so <clears throat> uh, in case the pulleys uh, cannot be arranged as shown in this figure a okay this is a this is b uh, or when the reversible motion is desired quarter turn belt drive with uh, guide pulleys are used okay here you can see uh, guide pulleys are basically used when the pulleys cannot be arranged okay uh, as in case of your a and when the reversible motion is uh, desired in that case we need a guide pulley okay remember this okay <coughs> so the guide pulleys is used when the pulleys can't be arranged arranged as in case of position a position a or when the reversible motion is desired or when the reversible motion is desired so in that case a quarter turn pulley with guide <coughs> sorry quarter, quarter turn belt with guide pulley is used okay then fourth category is fourth category is belt drive with idler pulleys belt drive with idler pulley okay so the schematic of this category here you can see it is of this kind okay uh, first a shows belt drive with a single idler pulley and here in the second case uh, we have a belt drive with 
more than one idler pulleys okay these are the idler pulley here we have a single idle pulley and here we have number of idler pulleys okay here you can sorry this one this this is not idler pulley these are the idler pulleys okay so uh, they are basically used they are used with shafts with shafts arranged arranged in parallel parallel and when when uh, open belt drive open belt drive cannot be used cannot be used due to due to small angle of contact angle of contact on smaller pulley on smaller pulley basically this kind of uh, well drives this kind of well drive provides provides uh, high velocity ratio high velocity ratio okay and <clears throat> when required the belt tension cannot be obtained by other means okay and it gives better belt tension okay as you, you can see here okay uh, here because of this idler pulley the chances of uh, slipping between the belt and the pulley lowers uh, for this reason we get more well, uh, velocity ratio okay as compared to simple open belt drive okay for this reason this kind of belt drives are used okay then uh, we have fifth category known as your compound belt drive compound belt drive so schematic of a compound belt drive is you can see here this is basically a compound belt drive okay a compound belt drive is used it is used when power is transmitted when power is transmitted from one shaft to from one shaft to another another through through number of pulleys number of pulleys in order to get the desired velocity velocity ratio in a short span span means 
basically the <coughs> distance between the driver and driven shaft axis okay uh, within a shutter span we, if at all we need a more velocity ratio in that case we can use number of pulleys okay so that <coughs> you can see here one is the driver pulley and the belt is wrapped around between one and two then from two we have the same shaft okay then comes your third pulley then again from third to four the belt drive transmit the power in that case we get a <coughs> desired amount of uh, velocity ratio by stepping up the uh, power transmission from the driver end to the driven line okay then we have this stepped or co uh, cone pulley drive this is called stepped or cone pulley drive so here you can see this is basically a uh, stepped uh, or cone shaped pulley drive the uh, transmission from the driving shaft to the driven shaft uh, uh, can be through changed uh, as and when required to get the different velocity ratio okay for for first uh, arrangement you can see you can shift this belt over here and this one to here to get a different velocity ratio then again from here to here and here to this position to get a, another velocity ratio okay so it is used used for changing for changing the speed speed of driven shaft driven shaft while the main while the main are driving shaft runs runs at constant speed speed of the driving shaft don't change but speed of the driven shaft will change in that case we will use this stepped pulley drive okay then seventh category is called first and loose pulley drive fast and loose pulley drive so in this case you can see this is the fast and loose pulley it is basically used when the uh, driven or you can say it is used when the driven shaft driven shaft is to be started or stopped started or stop whenever desired whenever desired without interfering with the driving shaft uh, say 
at this instant uh, there is a power transmission going on from the driving shaft to the uh, driven shaft okay uh, but when you don't need we can uh, shift this pulley okay so uh, this uh, belt will be loosened enough and there won't be any power transmission anymore from the driving end to the driven end so in that way you are not disturbing this driving shaft but you are cutting off this driven shaft from the main power source as and when required so for this reason you can use this first and loose pulley okay here basically what happened the pulley which is keyed to the machine shaft is known as first pulley and uh, runs on the same speed as that of the machine shaft okay machine shaft uh, so a loose pulley runs freely over the machine shaft and incap and is incapable of transmitting any power okay so when the driven shaft is required to be stopped a belt is pushed to the loose pulley by means of sliding bar having belt forks okay whenever you don't need any power you can shift the belt over the loose pulley and it will run freely over the machine shaft so there won't be any power transmission right so this is all about the category now as per syllabus you have uh, this uh, initial tension effect of centrifugal tension power transmission maximum power transmission okay uh, let's see so next is your velocity ratio of belt drive these are few essential things we should know velocity ratio what is velocity ratio the ratio between the the ratio between the velocities of the driver and driven which is also known as follower follower is called is called velocity follower shaft you can say okay so is called velocity ratio now let uh d1 is the diameter of the dia of driver shaft okay uh d2 is the dia of driven pulley rather you can say pulley and n1 is the speed of speed of driver shaft n2 is the speed of driven shaft okay then <coughs> velocity ratio uh before that we can say the length of length of uh, belt that passes over passes over the driver driver per minute is denoted by the circumference that is phi d1 into n1 okay and <coughs> it should be equal to the length of the belt that passes over the driven or the follower uh, so the length of belt length of belt 
passing over the driven pulley per minute is equal to pi d2 into n2 both should be equal otherwise there will be slippage so this pi d1 n1 should be equal to pi d2 n2 so pi pi get cancel out we have basically this velocity ratio velocity ratio which is denoted by the speed can say n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 basically okay so this is basically the ratio between the velocities of the driver and driven okay <coughs> so n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 okay when the thickness of the belt is considered let's say this is equation 1 when belt thickness let's say it is t is considered considered in that case your n2 by n1 will be equal to d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t in most of the cases belt thickness is not considered unless until it has been explained in the problem okay so you have to <coughs> see that now mm, uh, another way alternative way uh, we know that uh, peripheral velocity of the peripheral velocity of driving pulley uh, let's say it is b1 is basically pi d1 n1 by 60 okay and that of driven pulley that is peripheral velocity of the driven pulley b2 is by d2 n2 by 60 okay and b1 should be equal to b2 for no slip condition okay for no slip condition this b1 should be equal to b2 or you can say pi d1 n1 by 60 should be equal to pi d2 n2 by 60 or you can say it is n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 in either way you can show the velocity ratio okay then uh, velocity ratio for compound pulley velocity ratio for compound belt drive okay. here uh, let's take this figure this compound belt <coughs> uh, let d1 is the uh, dia of uh, pulley 1 pulley 1 and n1 is the speed of pulley 1 similarly uh, d2 d3 
d4 and n2 n3 n4 okay corresponding corresponding values values of pulleys 2 3 and 4 okay now <clears throat> we know that velocity ratio velocity ratio of pulley 1 and 2 it is n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 okay similarly <coughs> uh, velocity ratio uh, of pulley 3 and 4 is n4 by n3 is equal to d3 by d4 okay now <clears throat> let's say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 now multiplying these two equations we can write this as n2 by n1 multiply with n4 by n3 is equal to d1 d3 divided by uh, d2 d4 okay now <clears throat> this uh, n2 and n3 will be same because here you can see they are attached with the same shaft so this n2 here will be equal to n3 here so this will get cancel out okay so for this reason it will be n4 by n1 is equal to d1 d3 divided by d2 d4 if there are total four number of pulleys accordingly it will change okay so basically velocity ratio of a compound belt drive is the ratio of, of speed of last driven pulley divided by speed of first driver divided by uh, and which is equal to product of dia of driver pulleys divided by product of product of dia of driven pulleys okay. next is your slip what is slip of belt Slip of belt. So, uh, as uh, we have already discussed, that the motion of the belt and shaft, assuming a firm frictional grip between the belt and the pulley, okay, in some cases. In some cases, uh, some forward motion of the driver, some forward motion of the driver In some cases, some forward motion of the driver uh, with with the result of without 
carrying without carrying the driven pulley driven pulley with it with it is called is called slip of the slip of the belt means the driver <coughs> shaft will be rotating and so as the belt wrapped around here but the driven shaft because of slipping it there will be a false rotation but actually it won't be carrying the driven pulley with it so this phenomena is called slipping okay let's uh, and the slipping is mentioned in case uh, in terms of percentage okay let s1 percentage is the slip between the slip between the uh, driver pulley and belt okay and s2 percentage is the slip between the driven pulley and belt okay so in that case <coughs> uh, velocity ratio in case of slipping remember uh, velocity ratio of the belt of the belt uh, passing over the driver passing over the driver pulley driver pulley per second this is v is equal to pi d1 n1 by 60 okay minus v uh, pi d1 n1 by 60 times of the slip that is s1 by 100 okay so it is pi d1 n1 divided by 60 into 1 minus s1 by 100 1 without slippage minus with slippage okay so this will be the <coughs> final velocity similarly <coughs> this is not velocity ratio it is velocity okay sorry <coughs> similarly uh, velocity of the belt passing over the driven pulley per second okay uh, will be pi d2 n2 by 60 1 minus s2 by 100 okay So here we can simplify this uh, like let's say this is pi d2 n2 by 60 is equal to b minus b times of s2 by 100 okay where so b is equal to this much okay so substituting here we have this pi d1 n1 by 60 into 1 minus s1 by 100 into 1 minus s2 by 100 okay so we can say that n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 times of 
1 minus s1 by 100 minus s2 by 100 okay or we can say it is d1 by d2 times 1 minus s1 plus s2 by 100 okay or you can write this as d1 by d2 into 1 minus s by 100 where s is the total slippage okay now if thickness so this is your n2 by n1 if belt thickness is considered considered then n2 by n1 is equal to d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t into 1 minus s by 100 you have to find in this way so <clears throat> suppose a question will be given to you like uh, say so this is the question okay so here you can see an engine running at uh, 150 rpm drives a line shaft by means of a belt the engine pulley is uh, 750 mm diameter and the pulley in the line shaft is 450 mm a 900 mm diameter pulley and the line shaft, uh, shaft drives a 150 mm diameter uh, pulley key to the dynamo shaft find the speed of the dynamo shaft when there is no slip and when there is a slip of 2% on each drive means S1 is 2% S2 is also 2% and it is a case of a compound belt drive okay so the arrangement <coughs> arrangement is like this so this is the schematic okay so here you can see n1 is 150 rpm and d1 is 750 mm d2 is 450 mm d3 900 mm and d4 is the uh, follower end or the dynamo shaft which is 150 mm okay let uh, this is your n1 this is n2 this is n3 and n4 is the speed of the dynamo shaft okay now as per our relation we know that n4 by n1 is equal to d1 d3 divided by d2 d4 okay or i can say your n4 is equal to n1 is given n1 is 150 so 150 into it is 750 d3 is 900 divided by d2 is 450 d4 is 150 okay so this you will get equal to 1500 rpm speed of the follower okay this is when there is no slip no slip condition if there is a slip
we have this n4 by n1 is equal to d1 d3 divided by d2 d4 into 1 minus s1 by 100 into 1 minus s2 by 100 okay so here our n4 will be equal to 150 into 750 into 900 by 450 into 150 into 1 minus 2 by 100 to 1 minus 2 by 100 okay. so here with sleep you will get n4 is equal to 1440 rpm you please check the result okay it may be incorrect so with slippage we have a less rotational speed at the <coughs> driven end you can see okay so this is about the slip then another term known as creep of the belt creep of the belt now <coughs> here what is creep you can write here when the belt passes from the slack side to the tight side when the belt passes from the slack side to the tight side to the tight side a certain portion of the belt portion of the belt extends extends and it contains it contains sorry it contracts contracts again when the belt passes from tight side to the slack side due to uh, these changes these changes of length there is a relative motion there is a relative motion between the belt and pulley surfaces pulley surfaces this relative motion is known as this relative motion is known as creep okay now in case of creep velocity ratio velocity ratio considering creep
it will be n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 multiply with Young's modulus of the belt material E plus root over of sigma 2 divided by E plus root over of sigma 1. Okay, you remember this formula where this sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the stress in belt on the tight and slack side respectively and E is the Young's modulus modulus of the belt material okay. the e is the young's modulus of the belt material accordingly you will find out then length of open belt drive okay. length of open belt drive remember <coughs> i am not deriving this i will directly write down the formula for the length if uh, we have a open belt drive as shown here you can see uh, this one is the driver side this is the driven side both are rotating in clockwise direction and x uh, is the distance between their axis of shaft okay this is the distance between the two shaft axis R1 is the radius of the driving pulley, R2 is the radius of the driven pulley, then the length of open belt drive will be equal to L is equal to pi R1 plus R2 plus 2x plus R1 minus R2 square divided by x. Okay, in terms of in terms of fully ready in terms of r if you express in terms of diameter if you express it will be uh, pi by 2 into d1 plus d2 plus 2x plus d1 minus d2 square divided by 4x so it is in terms of pulley diameter okay so as per your problem you can use the formula if it is in radius you can use the first formula if it is given in diameter then you will use the second formula this is the length of open belt drive okay then length of cross belt drive crossed belt drive okay so the schematic of a crossed belt drive 
uh, we have already seen let me show you once again let's say this is the schematic of a crossed bell drive so the length length of crossed belt drive in terms of radius it will be pi r1 plus r2 plus 2x okay, plus r1 plus r2 square earlier it was r1 minus r2 here it is r1 plus r2 divided by x here it is in terms of pulley ready which can also be expressed as pi by 2 d1 plus d2 plus 2x plus d1 plus d2 whole square divided by 4x so this one is in terms of pulley diameter okay <coughs> now next is power transmitted by a belt how much power a belt transmit power transmitted by a belt so if you look at the schematic of general arrangement let's say I have a simple open belt drive here okay as you can see let let uh, t1 and t2 are the tensions in the tight and slack side of the belt respectively okay <clears throat> in newton then r1 and r2 r1 and R2 the ready of driver and driven pulley pulleys respectively respectively and V is the velocity of the belt velocity of the belt in meter per second then the effective uh, turning force at the circumference effective turning force acting at the circumference circumference of the follower or the driven pulley is basically the difference in the tension t1 minus t2 okay now work done per second work done per second will be this difference in force 
t1 minus t2 into the velocity okay so unit will be newton meter per second so the power power transmitted power transmitted p will be t1 minus t2 into v because this newton meter per second is your watt okay so this is the formula for power transmitted by a belt okay <clears throat> now ratio of driving tension in belt uh, open uh, in flat belt so for this ratio of driving tensions in flat belt drive uh, i am just writing the formula remember the formula is 2.3 log T1 by T2 is equal to mu theta okay or if you use ln it will be e to the power mu theta okay either formula you can use okay where this theta is the angle of contact basically where where t1 is the tension in tight side t2 is the tension in slack side theta is the angle of contact in radian angle of contact in radian okay means uh, let's say if uh, this is the pulley circumference and the belt is wrapped around, wrapped around it okay like this so the angle of contact will be this much Okay, this is theta in radian. So this is the relation to find out the ratio of driving tension. Okay. So you can say it is ln t1 by t2 is equal to e to the power mu theta. Okay. then determination of angle of contact determination of angle of contact first case open belt drive okay second case is your uh, crossed belt drive open belt drive cross belt drive so remember uh, <coughs> this For open belt drive, angle of contact, angle of contact or lap, angle of lap, 
theta is your 180 degree minus 2 alpha into pi by 180 in radian okay and for cross bell drive this theta is 180 degree plus 2 alpha into pi by 180 radian okay so in this way you can find out the angle of contact okay. where <coughs> what is alpha alpha is the angle let me show you the figure this is the angular alpha okay the wrapping of belt starts from point e okay then it covers through this point j and it comes back up to this g point okay now the angle extended out of this 180 degree is total 2 alpha half of that is alpha here okay. similarly here for a cross belt drive this angle is here angle alpha okay so you remember this okay then centrifugal tension first we'll cover all the terminologies then we'll solve few examples okay centrifugal tension <coughs> So uh, the centrifugal tension denoted by Tc is basically equal to mv square m dot v square okay. where this Tc is the centrifugal tension centrifugal tension acting on the belt okay and uh, this m is the mass of the belt mass of the belt per unit length per unit length in kg b is the linear velocity linear velocity of belt in meter per second r is the radius of the pulley k so in that case tc is denoted by mb square this is pulley radius okay then maximum tension in the belt maximum tension what is maximum tension <coughs> that uh, when you are considering uh, ten, uh, the centrifugal tension of the belt into account in that case um, the maximum tension in the belt maximum 
tensor in the belt will be equal to maximum stress maximum stress into cross sectional area cross sectional area so maximum stress is suppose sigma and cross sectional area is width of the belt multiply with its thickness okay so <clears throat> when centrifugal tension is neglected let's say this is capital T when centrifugal tension is neglected then this T will be equal to T1 that is the tension in tight side okay and when centrifugal tension is considered centrifugal tension is considered then this T will be equal to T1 plus Tc okay remember this then condition for maximum power transmission okay condition for maximum power transmission okay when the maximum tension t is three times of the centrifugal tension this is this will indicate the condition for maximum power transmission okay so <clears throat> we know that this t1 is equal to t minus tc and for maximum power for maximum power this tc should be equal to t by 3 that means your t1 will be t minus t by 3 that is 2t by 3 okay and also during this period the velocity of the belt velocity of belt for maximum power for maximum power V is equal to root over of T by 3 M M is the mass of the belt okay remember this then initial tension in the belt initial tension tension in the belt when the belt is wrapped around two pulleys okay <clears throat> the two ends are joined together so uh, there will be continuous power transmission from the driver end to the driven end uh, <clears throat> but there is a chance that the grid between the belt and the pulley may loosen because of uh, um, <clears throat> because of some uh, practical cases so in order to increase further this grip okay the belt is tightened up at the initial stage okay and at this stage even the pulleys are 
at the stationary condition the belt is subjected to some tension so this tension is known as initial tension okay so at the stationary position stationary position the belts are tightened up further for a better grip grip and it is subjected it is subjected to some tension which is called initial initial sorry initial tension okay now this initial tension is denoted by symbol t subscript o okay uh, let t o is the initial tension t1 is the tension in tight side t2 is the tension in slack side uh, <clears throat> okay in that case the initial tension t0 can be denoted by t1 plus t2 by 2 this is neglecting tc neglecting centrifugal tension and if you consider centrifugal tension this will be equal to t1 plus t2 plus 2 tc by 2 that is considering centrifugal tension so you remember this formula formula for initial tension okay i think in your syllabus this much is there okay now in the subsequent classes you go through these uh, theoretical aspects um, carefully note it down in the subsequent classes we'll solve few problems